What's up, my people? Hey, guys. It's been a long time. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. We're going to give it a few more minutes uh, for people are entering literally the meeting. <laughs> It felt so weird not waking up at 6 a.m. this week. 5.30 a.m. wake up time. I was like, where's my where's my 5.30 a.m. wake up group? <laughs> did you, uh, did you, you still wake up? <laughs> That's a bad like, side effect. <laughs> uh, I wake up thinking, did I finish Polis? Did I, did I finish Polis? <laughs> I miss Polis. Was that the fellows group you're referring to? Yes, um, there was the end of the fellowship 10-week uh, uh, program last week, and uh, and it was a little tough on, uh, on, 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 you know, like time zones to, um, <laughs> to have um, meetings at the regular work hours. Um, and, right. Uh, <laughs> I'm and curious then, what is, go ahead. No, 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 no. And then police was uh, the two leg. We were having a conversation and statement um, um, in every week. Right. Is there a web page to go see results or work products from that? Yes, um, I'll put it in the in the chat. But if you're on your phone, it's uh, it's under it's on Radical Exchange website. Uh, and uh, in the menu, it's under fellowship. Uh, you have uh, now um, there's um, individual pages on each uh, project, and um, um, yeah, so that's that would be the main page to uh, uh, to start with. Is, is it is it different from the page where we went to apply for it? Uh, well, technically, it's the same page, but it's been modified content. <laughs> Okay, I'll check it again. I'm very eager to see what uh, what it came to be. Yeah, and uh, and we have uh, uh, today um, uh, a few people who are going to talk about two of these uh, projects. So um, this is uh, exciting to have them as special guests. Yeah. <laughs> was there one project that everybody worked on together? No, it was uh, collaborative work and uh, feedback and exchanges, but um, but specific projects so there are 12 projects uh and 16 fellows so uh for example christine and aaron were on the call both worked on uh, their project called govern uh but chewy who is on the call was you know working by himself on uh, on his project but with the support of the mentors the foundation and the other fellows mm -hmm. I also wanted to share some some updates, uh, Fanny. You can let me know when the best time to go is. But there's uh, um, uh, just a handful of things going on right now with Radical Exchange Foundation that I wanted to sort of rattle off so that um, anyone out there can can reach out if they'd like to sort of uh, know more or get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, shall we actually get started? Uh, more people in the waiting room. No, I think we can get started. Yeah. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, so thanks everybody for 
um, joining us today. Always very exciting to see your lovely faces. And uh, and so this week, uh, we uh, this month, uh, we as we were just discussing, like we just ended the fellowship uh, program uh, for the first cohort. Uh, and, um, and so we will uh, have the chance to talk with a few of the fellows here. We are gonna present uh, two of the projects that are linked to a theme we wanted to more generally discuss, a uh, theme of governance. And, uh, and before we get there, uh, I don't wanna forget uh, like to, Ask if there are newcomers and uh, or people who, uh, will, you know, for whom it's the first call and uh, want to introduce themselves. Yeah, go ahead, Udi. Hi, uh, Hi, my name is Odi. I'm speaking from Helsinki, Finland. Um, I'm here because uh, uh, we run a similar network or community like Radical Exchange called Untitled, uh, which Radical Exchange has uh, just joined. And we have our community uh, meeting tomorrow. So I was like, I want to come and see you in action and learn more, more about the people in this space. Thanks. It's very nice to, uh, to have you. I'm, I'm very you. excited about the Untitled uh, community. I mean, if, feel free to just share, share in the chat uh, the link to the community call uh, for those who can uh, attend or are curious. Um, it's definitely uh, good to have and uh, and and uh, yeah, exciting. So thanks for joining. All right. Anybody else? No. Ah, we've all we've been here before. That's uh, that's good as well. Well, if you're shy, just feel free to use. Oh, hi, Andrea. Hi. Hi, uh, just wanted to share with everybody that tomorrow there will be a first event in, uh, in Washington, virtual event. Uh, it's going to be really just to catch up with the people that have shown interest in the radical exchange movement and uh, let's see who will show up and uh, then we will take it from there. So <laughs> I will update you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, and uh, is it going to be a virtual event, or is it already possible? Yeah, virtual. To have virtual. virtual. I'm still in Italy. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's uh, it's going that to be sense. virtual, but I wanted to get it started and see what will happen. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. Post. Well, if uh, if uh, if so, that's uh, the thing. If if there are people interested in in joining, maybe you can also share the uh, the link. Yeah. And, maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not and, sure. I'm using the smartphone. I don't. I'm not very good at it. Maybe Angela, that uh, she has uh, all the information, she can share it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, well, that's a good, uh, that's a great segue uh, to um, uh, to more like community updates. And uh, uh, and I know Matt, like you have uh, also some uh, uh, exciting news. So um, I guess well, let's start with Matt. Like if you uh, if you want to give uh, your um, your updates. Sure. So just I'll just go through some of these things quickly. Um, so one is I, I think most people on this call are probably already aware that we're um, we're kicking off a, a project uh, called Radical Exchange Voice soon, which is essentially a, um, uh, a sort of a, a stitching together of a bunch of different democratic systems and and technologies. Um, that we've you know built into sort of a, a web app that we'll be piloting with the radical exchange community as an initial matter to sort of um, uh, for with sort of a dual purpose. One is to see how it works and refine the, what we're building, and the other is to um, involve the radical exchange community in providing a set of uh, of goals and priorities for radical exchange foundation against which. We can be held accountable by the by the broader community. So, um, and this is basically a deliberation and voting process um, uh, that will obviously be remote and that you can all participate in. So, if you're interested in basically being involved in this beta um, and you know uh, piloting the system and helping to guide Radical Exchange Foundation, um, reach out at uh, voice at radicalexchange.org and we will uh, make sure to involve you. Uh, so really excited about that. Second, uh, we are 
in the early stages of putting together the 2021 Radical Exchange Conference. Um, it is most likely going to be essentially two parallel conferences, one in uh, the Northeast of the United States and the other in uh, Taiwan. Um, and we are, um, it's still early days, but we're starting the planning process here. And these conferences are always an enormous, enormous effort that uh, benefits from lots of uh, uh, community engagement. So if you're interested in maybe volunteering and helping to get involved in, you know, conference organizing committees of, of various kinds, um, also reach out uh, either to, to me or Fanny or Jen and um, would love to have your, uh, your help. Uh, finally, uh, there are just a few more things. We are doing quadratic voting pilots all over the world right now. So there's, there are going to be quadratic voting pilots in uh, state and local legislatures in Brazil happening over the next, um, over the next couple of months. Uh, we are doing uh, further quadratic voting um, um, uh, it's not even really a pilot. I mean, we're, do, we're, we're, doing, we're doing a quadratic voting exercise with the um, Colorado uh, State House and the Colorado State Senate, like during the next few weeks. Uh, and we're starting a, a project um, in collaboration with uh, Demos Helsinki, which is uh, behind the Untitled Project. Um, uh, that will be happening over the next few months where we'll be integrating quadratic voting into a bunch of different state agencies in, in Colorado. Um, the, the Data Freedom Act, so the, the policy work that, that we're doing on sort of the future of the data economy is, um, uh, is that work is sort of actively moving forward right now. So keep, keep your eye out soon for some more sort of publications and um, um, uh, um, yeah, public, public ideas and opportunities to engage with that. Uh, we are also organizing a, um, a one-day event on July 8th with um, ENAPE, which is like essentially the top sort of public um, policy uh, think tank slash educational institution in, um, in, in Brazil. Um, it's going to be like an amazing platform for radical exchange um, uh, ideas at sort of the, the highest levels of, of Brazilian um, policy conversation. Um, reach out if you're interested in knowing more about that. Uh, we're also organizing a, um, a, a big hackathon in uh, focused on sort of local infrastructure issues and local policy stuff in the city of Berlin, which should be happening in the fall. So there's just a bunch of things that um, would love for all, you know, all the, you know, you all um, to be aware of in case, um, in case you have connections or ways of plugging in or would just like to know more. So thanks. Thanks. Um, definitely a lot happening uh, right now. Uh, and I, I'll recap the projects uh, try in the chat or in, um, in, uh, in the minutes, but uh, if uh, again, anybody is, uh, uh, is interested uh, in uh, being involved or um, helping out, like it's always a, a welcome and very different initiatives uh, right now. Um, and um, yeah, so I wanted to give the opportunity to uh, other chapters to uh, mention upcoming events or uh, things that are happening uh, in the you know international chapters. And if uh, if not, like Angela, if you have like um, uh, again, I'm reintroducing Angela as a, as the um, a chapter community lead uh, for, uh, awesome. for helping uh, anybody with setting up uh, or um, you know running a, a chapter around the world. Um, she's a our superwoman of the community, so <laughs> feel free to reach out, Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw my um, email in the uh, in the chat. But nice to see everybody again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so if there's no chapter uh, updates, I mean we are always like resharing um, everything that is happening in the chapters. Everything is still virtual. 
um, but we're resharing everything in uh, in in Twitter and uh, and something I, I want to mention. It's uh, it's it's not uh, you know because you're not in Switzerland that you can't like uh, be part and and be interested in in the local use cases. So. Um, you don't have to live in the city to be involved uh, in a in a local chapter. Um, if um, if we don't uh, if you don't mind, I think we I want to go to the next um, to the theme of the day. So we're trying to have um, to organize the community calls around um, like big things, big big things, uh, and uh, and of course this. Um, there's a lot of, you know, like approaches possible. So it's um, try and an error as, um, you know, system. So if you have other ideas, let us know. Um, there's, so it's about governance. Governance is like, can, it's a huge uh, chapter and, and can really mean uh, very different thing, very different context. Um, Matt mentioned one thing that we are trying to do pragmatically uh, with Radical Exchange Voice. And uh, and during the fellowship, it was a big part of the curriculum. And uh, and before we hear more from uh, the two projects that uh, are tied to uh, to this theme, um, Jen or Matt, I don't know if you want to uh, talk about the subjects covered uh, during the fellowship um, or you know anything linked to uh, to this. Again, it's a broad uh, topic, so. Uh, well, I mean, the fellowship was a, um, I'll, I'll let the fellows uh, provide a little bit more color about, <laughs> about what we did, but I mean, it, it was a, uh, uh, I hope a, you know, great opportunity for a bunch of, of really amazing folks to get to know each other. We, we all kind of uh, walked through um, a, uh, a series of, of, of discussions and uh, kind of Group conversations um, led by you know speakers who are prominent in uh, in a bunch of these different fields, focusing on different uh, different sort of areas from um, from governance to property to data to um, what was the other one? Um, but that you know it was that was the competition. Competition. Thank you. <laughs> so. Um, uh, yeah, but it, I mean, it yielded a ton of great conversations uh, and intellectual exchanges. And I, I'm actually, um, I'm extremely excited for, uh, uh, to see how all of the projects in the fellowship develop and also really, really happy about a lot of the collaborations um, that were formed during it and that are gonna continue after it. So yeah, thanks. Awesome. So uh, without further ado, I think the best uh, is, uh, is to uh, actually hear from concrete uh, um, um, fellowship program, uh, fellowship projects. Uh, and uh, I don't want to give preference so to your Aaron and Christine, like who wants to go first? <laughs> Shall I jump then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so thank you, thank you. Uh, so, um, yeah, to, to put some some colors as Matt was referring. Sorry for for that that baby. Uh, it's a, it's now it's normal, right? Um, so, um, one second. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, for us, it was a, a great opportunity to to validate the ideas on what we were doing. I'm, I'm gonna jump in a minute in what we are doing as always at Toy City. Uh, but in general, we wanted to, to, to come in and explore, and as Matt was referring, to have these kind of uh, intellectual crashes uh, to, to see and, 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 and test and validate narratives around what we were doing. Uh, something that, um, that we, we took out uh, beyond uh, new friends, uh, mentors, uh, discussions, uh, a lot of uh, stepping out of the comfort zone on oh i have this idea and i have this narrative and then it's now now just put it away and and and, and create a new one so it was kind of a radical rebuild uh, of what we were doing uh, and one of the best things that we that we took out was to to change from a very technological description of what we were doing or or the way we were approaching the problem to, to a more social approach uh, in, in a sense of, instead of saying, hey, we're doing this technology for these problems, we started thinking about how democracy is living today. 
how how governance it's 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 a, a little bit evolving because of how society is evolving and how pandemic put all, all of us in our homes and, and and still there is a government that needs to keep running and, and there is a citizenship that we need to execute along with our government so uh from that perspective learning about um governance from 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 the different lectures uh from the different discussions uh there were coffee houses at, on fridays uh, for me, those were the best because of two things. First, um, they, they made me accountable to read and to study <laughs> and to and to fill in my police uh, <laughs> uh, comments. Um, so that was a, a, a very nice, nice thing. But also uh, during the coffee houses, we had breakout rooms at Zoom where we were discussing the topics of the week. Uh, and that was that was deep. That was very, very deep. Uh, I don't know if the notion that we got it's public, but but that's one of the, kind of the gold assets that, or I will say Bitcoin assets. Right. It's, it's not gold anymore, uh, but it's one of those assets right now that we have where I feel like, oh, this is this is a, a very um, clean up uh, a, a community uh cured uh contents and and debriefs and and insights from the, the topics that matt was referring about governance competition data and property right so so for for me that that was that was the best thing uh now a little bit on what we are doing uh we we have created a platform for for governments to easily create digital services so trying to reduce the friction in between what governments serve and how citizens can access those services uh, and more recently, we decided to put the citizen in the center by using blockchain digital identities. So it's a, it's a very exploratory terrain. Uh, what we are doing right now is literally giving a, the government of, uh, of Argentina, the presidency of Argentina, this is the first pilot using identities, giving the opportunity to test multiple blockchain wallets as a public address to deposit um, verifiable credentials. So your official documents are now blockchain verifiable credentials, easily interchangeable or shareable um, with, with that. Uh, can you share your screen if you want? Um, yeah, if you, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know if this is the right moment. Do you want me to share the screen? Shall I, shall I do this live demo thing? It's, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have okay. the power, I think, of sharing. Okay, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah. So, so, it was an accident. I had it ready. <laughs> Good job. So I had it just, just by any chance. Uh, so um, this is this is our previous repository where we're actually cleaning everything up. Um, but you can drop me a line if you want to, to join and, and, and see from a technical perspective what we are doing. But essentially, when we when we arrive to a new uh, government, uh, doesn't matter the, the, the level of the government, so we can create, there's a typo here. So then there you go. So this is my super admin account. So I can easily edit the landing page, the, the text right here. Uh, we created a modular approach. So for uh, government, sorry that it's in Spanish, but we are focusing in Latin America. Um, so it's at, at the very beginning, it was supposed to be kind of the, the gob store. So the app store for governments, right? So they turn it on different models. So you have peticiones ciudadanas here and you can see peticiones ciudadanas here. So you were creating different models right here. Uh, and the latest thing was to, to give citizens the opportunity to, to, create a, um, to create an account using a blockchain wallet. So for example, here's MetaMask, Coinbase, Uport. There are more uh, incoming. I'm not going to create my account right now just not to, to, to lose a lot of time, but just, just logging in as a regular citizen. This is not an admin account. This is a citizen account right now. So they have what we call the, the, the document holder. So this is me logging in with my identity and I can see I have a, a digital uh, verifiable credential as, as my digital identity. And this is a sample uh, certificate for, for one of the cities in Argentina that we're working with. So just to give you a, an idea on how does this look. Um, so you input the different form fields right here. Um, you request your, your um, your credential and then you get any credential like this and then i can share that credential for example if i ask for um a commercial permit sorry that it's not loading properly but all the all these fields uh on pink right here are written on the blockchain this is my public address and then you can see this is on the ethereum robstein network you can see all the blockchain details right here so and it's easily verifiable in four steps also because of radical exchange community and and one of the fellows uh, we learned that there is a there is a huge opportunity and a, and a huge benefit of adding uh, selective disclosure. 
So meaning that if I'm going to share this credential, maybe I don't want people to know my email, so I can share it, but I can I can just delete my email, hide my email from, from that credential. So that's one of the things. Uh, this is this is how it looks, for example, for a real uh, implementation. This is a, a commercial permit for a bakery in um, in Costa Rica, in the municipality of Grecia. So they are, yeah, as you can see, they are still sign with a with a picture. Uh, it's a, it's a little bit difficult to make governments go fully into blockchain and believe that this is a signature. <laughs> uh, so so we are still getting there. Uh, but this this makes them understand that that this works and it's again the same things. So just you just click verify and and it will, and it does the for uh, step verification for tampering expiration. So um, the main the main goal behind this is that if you already have, for example, a commercial permit and you want to have a liquor license or or you want to kind of combine different government services, you can easily attach and share and make it um, frictionless in, the, in that sense. Um, of course, with all the foundational attributes of a technology like blockchain, where you can um, take out uh, fraud possibilities or tampering uh, and, and make it at, at the same time a little bit more, more transparent, right? Uh, so that's 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 kind of our, our current journey. Um, uh, the, uh, I didn't show you the, the, the administrator part of the platform, but the, in the administrator, you have form builder where you can create the different um, request fields for, for example, a driver's license or whatever official document you are using. But I'm taking a lot of time and I want to hear Aaron as well and Christine and how they live the, the experience during the community and the fellowship. Thank you, Joey. Um, and uh, I think before we go uh, to Aaron and, and Christine, uh, I was wondering if uh, anybody had a question uh, uh, like directly to, uh, uh, specifically to you and, and related to your project. Ah, uh, Kelia, do you want to ask uh, directly your question? Yeah, I can I can read it. So the question says, are you using the already standardized format W3C verifiable credentials? So the answer is yes. Uh, we are actually get, getting inspired from, from two, uh, two, two uh, projects around verifiable credentials. The first one uh, was the block search proposed um, uh, standard from the MIT. Uh, and the second one is, is actually one that, that has been developed by, by uh, another one of the fellows. Um, it's uh, the open attestation uh, project in, in Singapore. So we are using a combination of them. Both are based on W3C standards. So, so yeah. The, the, the uh, actually, sorry, Block Certs is old. Uh, yeah, it is. It is. Uh -huh, it is. Uh, this and I is, don't this know is why anything. I, I'd love to see a link to the attestations project. I haven't heard yeah, about definitely. it, but it sounds interesting. That would be great. I, I will. Thanks. I will share it. I will share it on the on the chat, Kalia. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I I share with you the block search is old. Uh, still, it's it's our, our very very initial inspirations. It all started there. Yeah. Great. Thanks. I think we have a hand raised uh, from the, the phone. <laughs> yes, hi. You have your name. Uh, this is Aliza in Ohio. I'm not quite clear on what problem it's trying to solve, so I'm left wondering if it's essentially just a blockchain version of existing government software. Yeah, the, the main idea and one of the things that happens here in, in, in Latin America, essentially, I mean, and, and, and we have seen this everywhere, but, but where we are focusing, what we see is that governments, they don't have an easy way for you to, to get permissions, to get licenses, to get their, their documents in general online. Uh, and if, in, in best case scenarios, you get, you get a scanned PDF, right? So there is always fraud. There is always a, 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 yeah, a false document, false permissions to do something. So we are putting blockchain there to, to make uh, the digital document um, um, transparent and at least trustworthy, right? Uh, so, so just by putting things on the blockchain, instead of scanning a PDF that can be easily edited or, or tampered in general, now we can assure that the information, it's, uh, it's there, uh, it hasn't been tampered, it's authentic, and, and uh, all these, um, again, foundational attributes of the blockchain. So uh, the main thing, it's uh, giving citizens the opportunity to hold together all the official documents. So this, 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 this takes out a big problem, which is the government fragmentation. So the typical thing that happens with governments- The government's is that what? The government's what? Fra fragmentation. So, so it's- Frag frag Fragmentation? Fra yes, yes. So okay. meaning, meaning that- I had to hear the word clearly. Yes, it's, fr yeah. Fragments, pieces. <laughs> uh, Got it, so, thank you. 
so yeah, this is this 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 thing, uh, this this fragmentation, this this uh, small parts of a, a or small moving parts of, a, of making a government. It's what typically makes us as citizens do the same things once and again. Uh, so we repeat processes once and again, and actually public servants do the same things once and again, multiple times, because you need to go to one government agency and then the other, and then the other just to finish one, just uh, the simple thing or yeah, one yeah. Uh, request. So putting the citizen with the identity uh, at the center, it kind of breaches both things. So the, the, the thing that you do analogically, going from one government agency to another, uh, to, to another, the, the things that you do physically, now you can do it digitally. You just put yourself, put your wallet, put your document holder there, uh, and all government mm -hmm. agencies are, are depositing or allocating um, their licenses or permits or services inside uh, your, your wallet. So, so it's, it's a matter of efficiency, of, of, of delivering faster uh, and trustworthy uh, documents to, to citizens so that they can operate faster uh, or access your services faster. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I think this, um, uh, Joe had a point uh, in the chat on, uh, about uh, portability. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to comment on yeah. that. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, also, because of, because of these standards and what Kalia was referring, um, it's a, it, it, it's, it's way easier to verify documents just by clicking on that button. It looks super simple, uh, but, but currently when you want to validate information, it's like, for example, when you think about your, your, your university diploma, for example, if you want to validate that, it, it takes months uh, and money, of course. Uh, so, so Joel refers uh, here in the chat about portability uh, and a friend taking over six, six weeks uh, to get a verified birth certificate from Indiana. So that can that can be super easily uh, verified now. You have it on the blockchain. You can trust that. Uh, and there is a there is a lot of exploratory terrain there for uh, refugees. For example, uh, people uh, Venezuelan people that needed to move to Colombia because of government things uh, and and conflicts and, and all all of the, the situation in Venezuela. They moved to to Colombia. Uh, and imagine you have a thirty year experience doctor that cannot work as a doctor because there is no institution referring that he has uh, what the experience that he has, right? So now that you have this wallet and it's on the blockchain and it's decentralized, you can all support that and, and anyone can easily verify if it's um, following the, the open standards, right? Very, very nice. I, I, I have a question actually. Um, uh, what, uh, where you mentioned like that you're focused on Latin America. So I wanted to know if you can tell us uh, what your next steps are and if you're going to focus on a few regions or cities even and how people can help you, um, you know, uh, doing that. Yeah. Uh Right now, we're very focused on, on, on making a good project with the presidency of Argentina. That, that's kind of our, our, our top priority. Uh, we're working with 12 uh, public institutions today uh, across uh, Panama, Costa Rica, Argentina, um, Chile. Uh, but, but the presidency project is kind of the biggest one. So if, if we know that if we can do a good demonstration there, if we can, if we can uh, um, show good results, uh, show at learn at least uh, what's the wallet, for example, that it's uh, uh, offering the, le the least friction uh, for citizens to create their digital wallet to to, to declare that to their uh, to their government and to start using it as a document holder. To if, it, if we can nail that experience or learn from these pilot projects to, to easily replicate, uh, we believe that we are going to be in a, in a great position to to scale this same system to other places. Um, till today, we have been issuing a verifiable credentials without digital identities, so no document holders. So we kind of created a mess. It was like, okay, there's tens of thousands of these verifiable credentials. Now we need to organize. And this is why we started thinking about wallets and document holders. Very nice. And, uh, and if uh, people want to follow up with you, like maybe put your contact in, uh, in the chat. And, uh, um, and it's definitely um, very promising. Um, and I do want to go to Gavin uh, now, to Christine and, uh, and Aaron, who are also would love to hear your thoughts about the work you guys done in doing the fellowship and, uh, and, and most specifically your, your project. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, first off, I'm Aaron from Govern. I'm here with Christine, who's on the call as well. Um, First off, all I want to say is that like I have been a major fan of OS City for like years. So like I don't know if Chewy's ever known this, but like I've been fanboying over uh, 
over uh, OSC for like years to come. So I'm a big fan of the work you're doing there. And so I'll, I'll, I'm just myself. We'll talk a little bit about the fellowship. I'll talk a little bit about govern. Um, and then I'd love to talk about like what governance is. Cause I feel like sometimes that gets like totally overlooked. And the really cool thing about, I think having OS city and Chewy and like us and govern is we're actually hitting gov uh, governance from two sides of the three sided spectrum in like how we think about governance and govern. Um, so I think it's really cool that we're going to get both perspectives on this call, but yeah. So like I said, um, my name is Aaron. I'm from govern. Um, and essentially we're trying to build the kind of future of politics and campaign finance. Um, we think politics needs to be a lot simpler. We need things to be a lot more transparent. We think it needs to be easier to get politicians to kind of for politicians to work on your behalf. Um, and that's what we aim to do by making politics simple, easy, transparent, and accountable for people that don't feel like they have a home in politics today. Um, and the first thing we're looking to do is fix the campaign finance component a bit. Um, and the first, uh, the first campaign finance tool we're looking to fix is by building a campaign finance platform that leverages something called outcome-based donations. Essentially, outcome-based donations allow you to donate money to a politician, but they only receive your donation if they meet an outcome or a metric that you care about. So for example, I really care about fixing education in San Francisco. So I could donate $100 to the mayor of San Francisco on the condition that high school graduation rates go up by 2% in the next four years. And the mayor only receives my donation. She only receives my donation if that outcome, if that metric is achieved. If not, you can choose to send your donation to any of her opponents or to a nonprofit that works in that same space. Think of this like a mashup between Kickstarter and KPIs or Kickstarter and OKRs. Um, what we're doing is we're just starting to take the same tools that big money donors, special interest groups, lobbyists, even political parties, the same tools that they've historically only had access to in this closed off space and opening it up so anyone can get access to it. So we equalize the campaign finance playing field instead of like by putting shackles on them and bring them down to our level, but rather by raising us up to their level. Um, so that's like the first tool we're looking to build. Like the whole goal, the vision of govern is to put as many political tools in your democracy toolbox. Um, like we are, we have a crazy glut. Like we think like to think of our political and governance system as super mature, it's not. We have a glut of tools. We have very few ways to give feedback and very even less ways to hold them accountable. Um, and so our whole model is like, politicians are gonna be there. They're gonna have an unfair advantage forever. How do we leverage them to work? How do we use them for what they are, which is tools and work with them as tools rather than see them as people that we need to punish or reward based off things. So I, I've done a lot of speaking now. I also wanna like quickly hand it over to Christine give a quick intro, um, you know, add any color to govern that that uh, we missed, and then maybe we can dive into some governance talk. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Um, I, I think Aaron gave a great intro. Um, I just want to call out that I just dropped the link to our, we're open sourcing our white paper. Um, so I just dropped the link in the chat. Um, comments are very much welcome. Uh, we want to build in public and incorporate as much feedback um, as possible because uh, two people definitely cannot think of everything. Um, so definitely check that out uh, once you get a chat, uh, once you get a chance. Um, and in terms of intro, I think I'll just mention, I was kind of inspired uh, to join this path um, because when I was in grad school, um, NYU's GovLab really just sparked so many questions in my mind. They're doing a lot of work about um, participatory govern governance, um, collective intelligence. Um, so there's a lot of research and innovation out there. And then when I met Aaron, I was like, oh, this is a very real world um, example of this taking place. And so my two worlds kind of collided and I'm um, very happy to join the team. Yes, so first off what Christine said, we are open, open sourcing our white paper. If you wanna learn more about the governance solution, go to the white paper. We just released the solution section read it, comment on it, tear it up. Like we want, like, if you disagree with what we're saying, say it, like we need public disagreement. Like that's the goal. Um, and, and Christina's being so modest, like she has been an incredible help to govern. And it's actually really cool what Christina is working on when it comes to govern. There is information asymmetry that exists in a society today. Like we can't fight that. It exists. And the truth is we as constituents are really good at saying where we feel pain 
We're terrible at saying what the right outcomes or metrics are to reach to actually improve it. So what Christina is like really working on focusing on is how do we get academics? How do we get experts, think tank researchers, um, NGOs, even the politicians themselves involved early on in the process so that when we say, hey, education, well, I want to fix education. We can bring in the experts to be like, if you want to fix education, these are the outcomes we need to track against. And then politicians deliver it. It's like, it's taking what we view as now zero sum politics, um, like po political power is transactional and making a positive sum where we work with our politicians, we work with our governments to actually improve things. So I I'm going to stop. I'll, I'll open up like if people have questions, ask away. Otherwise, I'm going to dive into some governance talk. Thank you, Aaron. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, Jen and I shared uh, a few uh, resources uh, for Govern, but um, same question than uh, the one for Chewy Leg. Um, I mean, you mentioned help with the white paper. Is there any other way um, people can reach out to you or help uh, in the project? Definitely. There's lots. We need help. Like th this is not a problem where less heads, more heads is better than less. Like that is the TLDR for Govern. Um, so it depends on what you want help with. If you're technical and a developer, we're, we have an, we're about to like start building the like technical and de developmental specs and we're going to do that in an open source way. So we'd love to get you involved now. That's number one. Number two, if you like to talk about governance and like have ideas on how, what the next view, next future of governance should look like, get, get involved with our white paper. Three, if you are a movement leader, you are active in your city uh, and like ecosystem, and you're trying to make in real improvements for your city life, we're starting city coalitions to help bring govern into actual cities. So we'd love to get you started with a city coalition in your city. So those are the three biggest ways um, to, so please, if any, depending on your route to like fixing government, come talk to us. I'm gonna drop my email in the chat right now, literally email me whenever and we'll find a way to get you involved. But those are the three big ways. And then just talking about Govern. You like what we're doing at Govern? Say it. You hate what we're doing at Govern? Say it. In fact, if you hate what we're doing at Govern and you write a paper on it, we will publish it. Like, I'm, we're serious. Like, we want good and bad feedback. So um, that's how you get involved. Noted. Um, very, uh, thank you uh, for that great call to action. And uh, um, so I, I do want to let you continue on uh, um, your thoughts, uh, like more general thoughts uh, on, on the subject. And, uh, and if anybody wants to chip in, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so this, this call is pretty fortuitous for us because we're actually writing, I'm like, we're in the middle of like writing this, this article about like how we define governance. Like governance is kind of this like abstract word that sometimes gets thrown around that we operate in, right? Um, and so the way we see it at Govern is actually the intersection of three defined things. The intersection of civics and civic life, basically how do you rule as constituents get involved with government? The interaction with po political or politics or political life, how do our representatives or how do the people in power that are making decisions um, get more power? And this third circle, which is um, government. How do we distribute government services? How do we distribute public goods? And if you think about it as an Venn diagram, Maybe I can pull up some slides in a second. To think about as a Venn diagram, we think about those three circles as like what governance is, is essentially the intersection. So the intersection of civic life, political life, and government life. And the governance intersection is the checks and balance system, the checks and balance system that we've created between all three. And so our goal at Govern is we are taking an approach that we can make more self-governance by creating a bigger overlap of the civics and politics circles. That the more ways we give constituents to hold politicians accountable, the better our governance decision-making is gonna be. Where I think is super interesting is what OS City is doing, and true, correct me if I'm wrong, they're coming from other, another angle. They're saying, we're operating over here in the government services space. If we can overlap the government services with the civic services circles more and more, then we're creating more self-government itself by we're getting people involved in how we distribute public goods. We're getting people involved with how we get politicians to get better public goods. They're deciding how to get distribute things better. So that's how we think about governance. I, I, I don't know if people uh, have thoughts on that. I love your energy and enthusiasm and passion. This is something no money can buy. This is just next level, the OS city. I'm actually trying to do something similar in this very theme, but not trying to 
retrofit into existing four years election cycle, but build the entire incentive and game theory behind the multi-planetary civilization. Uh, there is this, this concept of the network state that as the blockchain is decentralized, many individual uh, real estate properties can join this network state. Say a, a ranch in Utah, a community in Oregon, a farm in England. Uh, there is this concept of a network state and I am literally thinking how to set up the incentives behind the network state. How do we make decisions, but not trying to retrofit into the old existing system with four years election cycle, but how to design the governance from scratch, bearing in mind that now we are decentralized on this planet, but soon we will establish a multi-planetary movement. So yeah, I'm just so passionate about your energy. This, this is just next level. We are here at the ground zero, setting up the solid foundation. Yeah, uh, so Mars, we like 100% agree with that statement. Um, one, thank you. Uh, <laughs> for, for I'm going to think on behalf of Chewie, myself and Christine, thank you for that compliment on the energy. Um, but what, so it's interesting that you brought that up. We think about that a lot as well. Like what is continue, like one of the things we're excited about with outcome-based donations is it provides a new mechanism for continuous feedback. Same thing with OS City. It's like this idea of how do we create a, a way that like, we should not only be able to be heard every four years, the nine months before an election. Like that's messed up. Like what, what about the other three and a half years, right? So how do we take that nine month focus and spread it out over the entire four years by creating continuous feedback loops? That's what we kind of aim to do at Govern. Um, and can I offer a couple of thoughts? Please. Um, I, was, I was thinking that I think in the, um, in the framing, I mean, one, um, uh, one thing that occurs to me is that one, one of the things that I like about what you're, what you're building is not only that it's a tool to like hold politicians accountable, but it's also a tool. It's also something that enables, it basically helps politicians, you know, get new ideas and get new information and get, you know, um, improve the aims that they are pursuing. Um, and I, I think that's an important, um, I mean, even when we get into these philosophical conversations about what governance is, I think that that is actually, it's important to retain that side of the, of the equation, right? So that, you know, instead of, instead of just thinking of government as, some, as something that is outside of society and something that we need to hold accountable because it's like holding us back or something like that, it's also something we participate in so we can improve, so we can, you know, add to uh, through, um, you know, participatory processes and stuff. So I think it's, um, uh, yeah, just, I think that's an important part of the framing. And I think that that's a lot of what you're doing at, at Govern. That's one of my favorite um, things about the project. Thanks. Oh, we appreciate that. And yeah, I totally agree, Matt. Um, the big thing we talk about, like we think we call our vision open source politics and governance. But inherently in that is this idea of shifting from zero sum politics to, to um, positive sum. Kind of the idea being just what you're saying. Politics is not this thing that we like punt to our politicians and say, don't mess it up. It's something we should work with them on, right? Um, and like you say, we can now help our politicians prioritize the issues that we care about. Um, so a lot of people are like, oh, you're increasing accountability in politics. And I like to correct them. I say that we're actually creating dual accountability where they're gonna be more accountable to us but we actually become more accountable to them too. Um, and it like brings us up to the same level. I see a, a raised hand. Yeah, I was about to say, I see a hand, yeah. Um, on the phone? Yes, the phone hand. Uh, this is Elisa in Ohio again. Um, and I also happened to live in Costa Rica at one point. Um, I might be one of the people who disagrees with govern, but I think we probably share the same sense of the problem, but may have different premises for how to deal with it. So I wanted to check, did you say that you didn't think that the problem of having enough information would change? Mm, 
No, so I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. Uh, well, the, I wanted to check one premise that I thought I heard you say early on in terms of you're, you're focusing on the politicians, not the information. No, 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 no. So we're focusing on it all. So the thing we we're talking about was some information asymmetry that exists in the system today. Um, yeah, when you say that, what are you, you go, keep going. Yeah, totally. So what we found, and I, I'd, be, I, I'd be curious to hear your concern because I think I probably share it and I can explain why we get there. But what we found is when we first started outcome-based donations, we went to users, we went to like people, constituents, and we're like, here, here's the tool. Like go into the world and conquer. And people are like, Aaron, like, we don't really understand. Like, we don't understand. We don't have the thousand foot view. I know I want to fix climate change in San Francisco, but I don't know how that translates to what I need to do in San Francisco right now. Like, what are the right out outcomes? What are the KPIs? What are the right policy proposals? What does KPI stand for? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Key performance indicator. Like, essentially, what are the right okay. metrics? Okay. What are the right metrics we should track against? And so we've created right. this okay. newer model that instead of finding that information asymmetry, leverages it. And we dive into details in the paper, but essentially the way it works is us as constituents can go into a uh, go into a city like area and say, okay, I want to fix climate change. Let's go to that one. Yeah, I think um, I got that part. I guess if I can just keep it short for time's sake. Oh, please, please. Um, the, I don't think people are short on incentives to want to fix education, as you call it. Um, and just grading people on whether they quote unquote fix education won't by itself fix education. Totally. So that's why I think I'm working from a different um, foundation, I guess. So I, I also want to point out, oh, go ahead. So, sorry, I was just uh, being mindful of the time because I, I do want to uh, just give some time. So I think uh, if you if you want to reach out like to uh, discuss more with Aaron and uh, and there's definitely a lot of links in the chat which I, I don't know if you can see right now but we're gonna have it in the minutes uh, and uh, and yeah continue the discussion with uh, with Aaron after um, because just to finish the call there were a few other uh, announcements uh, I think Luca you had uh, something coming up so I just wanted to give you the opportunity to if Luca is still here. Um, to uh, to share um, what you shared in the in the chat, or just give more details. Luca. By Luca, do you mean me? Yes. Oh, Luca. wonderful. Right. Hello. <laughs> so we just had merch, which was the first Hack Plus Policy Thon. So you can check that out. And we have a, tons of different projects that, of course, would want a little more support. Uh, obviously, the students really open to you know helping you develop anything that you'd want yourself. Uh, and then the Meta Lab, which is Design Studio at Harvard, is hosting this uh, new spec or pop up studio when it comes to urban design as well as uh, you know well, a little bit of cryptocurrency, but mostly you know digital privacy. So. Uh, that's an event. I think they're they're also looking for collaborators, and um, also recognizing the craziness of donations. Um, there, there's stuff going on with Open Secrets and USA Facts right now. So, if anyone wants to look at that data there, and then also I wanted to mention that um, currently Meme Packs. So they're just like this uh, TikTok account that I was working on. They have uh, we've gotten over 10 million views. We're now putting together a strategic meme group, which is essentially just like uh, a design studio for. Uh, organizations such as yourselves to get the word out and through drops and other, you know, uh, more Gen Z related uh, media. So if anyone's interested in that, uh, I'll reach out or feel free to hit me up. Great. Thank you. Um, thank you. And I, I think there's um, um, B as well. Uh, you had mentioned uh, in the chat the um, Sorry, I'm losing. I, I lost your message in the chat, but another like, community that was close to Radical Exchange and and um, and yeah, we'd love to hear more details. Sorry, it's metaverse something, meta governance <laughs> seminar. Sorry, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, double scheduled. So um, uh, on this day it doesn't work, but hopefully in the future, folks can join. There's a community um, around the meta governance project, which is um, a lot of folks who are building um, kind of experimental tools and processes, not unlike um, what's discussed here. Oftentimes, with a little bit more of a um, kind of 
game theory frame, I would say, on some things. Um, so there, there tends to be sort of um, folks who have more of a simulation background, but um, a lot of the discussions in the Meta Governance Salon, which is a weekly speaker series um, that I'm sure you all would be great speakers in, um, speak to um, kind of the both, you know, social challenges as well as the technical challenges around, um, you know, voting systems, uh, different jury systems, et cetera, uh, might be up your alley. Thanks. Uh, yeah, always uh, interested in, uh, in discovering new, uh, uh, new thing. Um, in, uh, in terms of uh, upcoming events or anything that um, you know is happening or anybody has um, anything um, worth sharing uh, in terms of upcoming event, um, that would be great uh, here or in the chat. Uh, I think we're always all, people are looking for, you know, more, uh, uh, more events and, and conferences. Uh, so feel free to uh, to share that. And um, um, I think, I mean, we have five minutes left. So Matt, I don't know if there was anything else uh, or Jen if, that you wanted to cover or if Glenn, you have a comment on um, the two projects we listened to. I know you heard them before. Uh, it would be great to conclude uh, the call. Nothing from me. Um, thanks everyone for uh, for sharing. And nothing from me. Oops. Thanks everyone. <laughs> so Glenn, the word of the the last word. I, I I I think they're both really interesting projects. I think there's lots of interesting things going on in the identity space. Uh, as Clea highlighted, it's great to get a sense for what's the range of things and what you can draw on best. Uh, in, in terms of govern, I would echo what Matt said that, you know, um, metrics and so forth are as much useful to politicians as they are uh, useful to citizens and holding politicians to account. So I think, you know, the more we can reach cooperation rather than necessarily a conflictual way of looking at it, uh, uh, the better. Awesome. Well, um, I think you are uh, winning four minutes until your next call, I guess. Uh, and I uh, really wanted to thank uh, Christine, Tui, and, uh, and Aaron for uh, sharing their projects. And they've been doing that last week for the closing event. Um, and um, you can actually uh, watch that closing event again if you're interested in the other projects. Uh, and uh, But we'll have uh, definitely more uh, coming up uh, around the projects and good luck to you guys like to uh, continue I think this is you know <laughs> the end of the of the fellowship but it's really the beginning <laughs> and uh, of uh, of the journey so uh, it's good to be on that with you and um, yeah um, I think that's that would be all for today so thank you very much everybody to make one last comment on what B put into the chat which is um, we like I think more than anything the decentralized ID community needs more human centered design and more experimentation with end users, not on end users, with end users. This is what is really, really profoundly missing in this space. Um, and I think if it, like, I actually think, like, you know, just a little bit more of that is worth like huge piles of technical work because there's been so little of it. And so, like, I would just, incredibly strongly encourage anyone who has sort of a human-centered design, participative design, inclusive design background to think seriously about engaging in that space. And yeah. just to build on what Glenn's saying, I'm happy to help connect you um, with the, like our community is a little bit hard to navigate if you're new, and I'm happy to help you do that. And then there's a, there's a product manager community of practice that meets every two weeks that may be a good starting point to plug in to that folks thinking about that already all right um thanks uh, thanks a lot uh, for sharing everything and don't worry if you did not save everything in the chat we'll uh, we'll publish that with the minute as uh, angela mentioned uh so uh great well we'll see you soon and really don't the, don't be shy uh, to reach out um so with um, more space to uh, collaborate on uh, everything that we're doing. So thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.